Good morning. Good morning. Hey, welcome to worship this morning at Zion. Uh, yeah, I'm Pastor Joel, and um, I'm grateful that you can welcome me. Uh, if you haven't been here in a while, I've been, I haven't either. Uh, <laughs> I've been away for about uh, five weeks on a little mini sabbatical, and uh, but Pastor Veronica and intern Pastor Katie let me come back. So um, <laughs> grateful to be here and grateful that we can worship together. Um, if you're visiting with us, we, I welcome you. And if we haven't gotten a chance to meet, I'd love to have an opportunity to, to chat with you after worship if you have time. So welcome, whether you are here on site or joining us online, to pray that you experience God's presence and hear God's word for your life today. Uh, for everyone here in this space, we'd love for you to fill out the, the there are these brightly colored connection sheets in the bulletin and later in worship as as uh, offering plates come around, you can drop those in there. These just have a number of ways to help connect you here uh, with the Zion community and help us connect with you. Before we start worship, a couple of several announcements that uh, things that are important in the life of this community. First of all, um, here in Loveland, we have two other ELCA Lutheran congregations that we partner with. And as we've done for I don't even know how many years we've done this now, but um, one Sunday during the summers, uh, we always do a little pulpit swap. So you're going to have a pastor from one of those other two churches here next week, and all three of us will be at uh, one of the other churches next week. Uh, if I knew where I, where I was going to be in an hour, I'd tell you where we were going to be, but I don't even remember right now. <laughs> so Trinity, right? Yeah, yeah, Trinity. <laughs> and then... After worship, after the second service, so around noon or, you know, any anytime that it works for you, we're going to be gathering with those folks from Trinity and King of Glory over at Mahaffey Park um, and for a picnic and for some fun and fellowship together. Now, uh, if you know Mahaffey Park, you know there's two different ways to get there. So make sure if you're going for that picnic, um, you go on the south side on 22nd Street and go into that south entrance, and then we'll make sure that we are visible. I mean, how can you miss three different churches gathered in, in a park, right? So, um, and if you'd like, as you join us, if you'd like, bring a side to share, bring a chair to, to sit in, um, whatever. But bring a friend, uh, and we'll have, we'll have some fun and activities to be able to share together. Throughout the month of July, the, our Biblical Justice Book Group is sponsoring an appeal uh, to collect personal hygiene items and unused greeting cards for the New Beginnings worship community. Now, some of you may know about New Beginnings. We've had some interactions with them over the last year or two. New Beginnings is a worshiping community that is, a, uh, is sponsored by our church, by the ELCA, and it meets in the Women's Correctional Facility down in Denver. Um, and it's an incredible ministry and program to, to help keep those women connected to God, to each other, help them prepare for life on the outside. Um, and so if you would like to support that ministry and their life just throughout this month, uh, there's a table just, just out there. Bring some greeting cards that then they can use and share with, with their loved ones um, outside of, out of the prison. Um, also some hygiene items that they can, they can use. And we'll, at the end of the month, we'll take those all down there to them. You probably noticed if you parked in the parking lot that throughout, this is our month again that we're um, sponsoring and we're hosting Safe Lot. We have guests who are currently without homes. They're living out of their vehicles. And so we allow them to stay here in a safe location. That takes a little bit of, of work and some volunteering. And we still have some slots available. So if you're interested in helping provide a meal we provide meals for them on tuesdays and thursdays um, or if you're helping serve at, uh, interested in serve as a host um, we have an evening host you don't have to be here every night but just checking in on them and making sure that they're okay um, both an evening and a morning host if you're interested in helping with that program and with that ministry just let us know um, and we'll get help you get signed up or there's a, a connection in either the email or the bulletin announcements to, for the sign up for that. And then finally, one more announcement. This coming Saturday is Nourish. Nourish is this 
just an incredible ministry for, of conversation and, um, and, and faith and food, of course. Um, but uh, they, we often have really real conversations, whether they're difficult conversations or not. It's a great time to be able to gather with others around a meal. The, it starts at 5.30 this Saturday, and recently they changed their scheduling. So if you're used to coming, you know you could just kind of come in whenever because they would eat first. Well, they're going to be starting the conversation first. And so if you're, if you're coming, um, and I hope you would con consider it, or if, if you haven't been, it's a great opportunity. They're going to be talking about freedom and what is freedom and how do we see that, especially as, as people of faith. How do we live in that? So come right away at 5.30 to start the conversation. And there is something available for people of all ages. So whether you are our oldest adult or our youngest child, there's something for you there. You're gonna find a lot of other uh, announcements in the bulletin. You can focus on those, whatever may apply to you. But know that um, whatever we do here at Zion, all are welcome. Today we're beginning a new theme for worship uh, for this month of July. We're calling Everyday Prophecy. The scriptures for this month invite us to encounter four different prophets, and these prophets speak not only to their own time, but they speak to our time as well. They give us direction and, and invite us today, we hear especially how we might respond to God's call to us for our lives. And so today we're going to start hearing from the prophet Ezekiel and consider how we might hear and how we might answer God's call for us. I invite you to hear that in all that we do and say today. So we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. This is a chance for us to acknowledge that, that we're broken and, and our lives are not perfect. But as we come here to worship, God prepares our hearts and our minds. Uh, and God forgives us so that we can worship freely. For that, I invite you to stand as you're able We're gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word we may confess our sins receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear this promise of God's forgiveness for all. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word has guided and challenged and nourished your people throughout all generations. Help us to faithfully respond to your word in our world through the power of Jesus, who is the word incarnate. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated and I'd like to invite any kids forward for Kids in Christ. Good morning. Let's start with God be in my head, God be in my heart, God be on my left, and God be on my right. Oops, oops. All right, I have a question for you. Which one of these would you rather eat? These, donuts, or the Bible? Which one would you like to eat? Donuts. <laughs> donuts, what is, what's your vote? Donuts, yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so today we hear kind of a silly story. In Ezekiel, he saw a vision that God gave him a scroll with words of lament, mourning, and woe. Kind of like the feeling when someone you love goes to heaven. So God told him to eat the scroll and then go and tell the people of Israel. So Ezekiel ate the scroll and he said it tasted as sweet as honey. So kind of like eating the Bible. That's kind of crazy. So like I asked earlier, would you rather eat a Bible or donuts? Ezekiel thought eating this scroll was what he needed to do. We can still follow God and do what he tells us to do without eating the Bible. 
Some examples could be holding the door open for someone, sharing your snack, coming to church, following the Ten Commandments. So although we don't eat the scrolls, as far as I know we don't, we can still learn to listen to God's commands by being good followers of him. So let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for guiding us and helping us become better followers of you. Thank you for providing for us and giving us good direction. And all God's people said, amen. So you can have one of these donuts, but stay around because <laughs> we're going to learn the new memory verse. All right. Can you hold this one again? Sure. Okay. So this one is from Psalm 145, and we're just going to learn the underlined words. So the first one is Lord, and we've done this one before. We do like a dash. So Lord. Okay. And then faithful, you do like two signs like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe I should have waited. <laughs> it's faithful, so we're going to like bounce them. Faithful in all. So you put one hand and circle the other hand. Um, in all his words, so it's like you're kind of making a backwards P. And gracious. Whoa, <laughs> this one is kind of hard. So you start at your mouth and go around and then circle this hand again. So around and then around again. That's gracious. And then in all, that's another circle around your hand. And then deeds is like this. Deeds. We've had that one before. Yes. All right. Can you, do you think we can do it all together? Sorry. Can you multitask, eat a donut, and do signs? All right. The Lord is faithful in all his words. And gracious in all his deeds. Psalms 145. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming up. reading for today is from Psalm 123, and it's read responsibly. The words are in your bulletin. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As, as the, the eyes of servants, servants look, look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he God has, has mercy, mercy on upon us. us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our, Our soul has, has had more than, than its fill of the scorn of those, those who are at ease, ease of, of the contempt of, of the proud. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 2, verse 1, through chapter 3, verse 3. The Lord said to Ezekiel, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. 
they and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn, so I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And you, O mortal, do not be afraid of them, and do not be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns surround you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words, and do not be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. I looked, and a hand was stretched out to me, and a written scroll was in it. He spread it before me, and the scroll had writing on the front and the back. Written on it were words of lamentation and mourning and woe. He said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. He said to me, mortal, eat this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it, and in my mouth it was sweet as honey. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Two weeks ago, I was in the Denver airport, sitting next to the moving sidewalk outside of gate C-52, wearing this campus ministry t-shirt with a Martin Luther quote on the back. My flight was about to start boarding when a Southwest employee came and stood next to me and said, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, but did Martin Luther really say that? I don't know if you all can see from up here, but the back of this shirt says, sin boldly, but believe even more boldly. And Luther wrote this in a letter to his fellow reformer, Philip Melanchthon. So I looked up at this man and I said, yeah, Luther really did say that. He got kind of a concerned look on his face, and he said, but Luther couldn't have meant that we could just go around doing whatever we want, right? Like, what did he mean by that? I said, yeah, I think you're totally right. Luther didn't want us to go around intentionally sinning, but I think what Luther was trying to say is that we should never let our fear of sin keep us from trying to follow God's word and love our neighbors in the world. We should go into the world and take action to care for God's creation, and if we happen to get it wrong sometimes, which we will, we need a bold belief that God loves us and will forgive us anyways. This man, we'll call him Derek, he considered my answer and then asked if he could sit down with me. So I motioned to the open spot next to me and I said, have a seat. And as he got settled, we continued in conversation. We covered all sorts of topics like sin and forgiveness and how can God be good, but also all powerful when so many terrible things happen in our world. He asked, didn't Martin Luther have to go into hiding for the things he said during the Reformation? And aren't we glad Luther was in the right place at the right time to translate the Bible so that us everyday folks could have access to the word of God? Derek and I were having a real pastoral moment in the Denver airport when the conversation turned to some more contemporary issues in the church. I don't remember how we got here, but at one point, Derek turned to me and said, you know, the Methodist church is going crazy right now. <laughs> here at Zion, we have been practicing asking questions of curiosity during our Held Together in Christ sessions every other week, so I decided to try it out. I responded with my own question of curiosity, and I asked, 
What do you mean by going crazy? And he said, well, they're letting all sorts of people be pastors. They're letting gay people be pastors. They're letting women be pastors. And then he asked, and then he asked, what does the Lutheran church think about all that? I said, well, it depends on the kind of Lutheran you're talking to, but my brand of Lutheranism does ordain LGBTQ people and does ordain women. And in fact, I'm in my last year of seminary to become a pastor myself. <laughs> Derek looked at me like I had just eaten a scroll of the Lord and said it tasted like honey. And then he said, well, I didn't mean to be offensive. I smiled back, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I said, I'm not offended. And then we continued to talk about what it means to be called by God. He wanted to know how I could feel called to be a pastor when there are a handful of passages in our Holy Scriptures that say things like, women should be silent in church. I had a really great opportunity then to brag on y'all. So much of my call to pastoral ministry has been affirmed and challenged and transformed by my internship year here at Zion. I talked with Derek and I said, all the books of the Bible, all the books of God's word were written by and for specific communities. So I believe that God's word should be interpreted in community. And I am grateful that this community already has a history of interpreting scripture in a way that lifts up women leaders in this church. But Derek's point remains, there are certain parts of scripture that are used to silence certain people in the church. And the truth is, there are a lot of other parts of God's word that are racy, uncomfortable, and downright horrifying, as one of my favorite podcasts likes to put it. So this conversation with Derek got me thinking. What exactly is the word of God to which we are called to respond? How does the word of God shape our individual and communal lives? What does the word of God have to say to our modern day world? Like Pastor Joel said at the beginning, throughout July, we will be exploring this idea of everyday prophecy. We will be reading the stories of four Old Testament prophets who are our forefathers in faith. This morning, we heard the call story of Ezekiel. Next week, we will meet Amos, then Jeremiah, then Elisha. Each of these prophets were commissioned by God to speak God's word to God's people in their own time and in their own place. So as we encounter the amazing call story of Ezekiel this morning with eating scrolls and visions of God, the questions that came from my conversation with Derek still seem relevant. What is the word of God? How does it impact our lives today? And also, how do we know if we've heard it through an actual prophet? We are not alone in asking these questions. Discerning what is or isn't the word of God, or what is or isn't prophecy, is not just a modern day challenge. God's people have always been seeking to faithfully hear, interpret, respond to and live in accordance with God's word. God's people have always been asking, what exactly is the word of God? Is it the scroll on the hand of the Lord that Ezekiel ate? Is it the tablets of the Ten Commandments? Is it just the four gospels? Could it be those parts of scripture that Derek referenced in the airport? 
as long as God's people have been trying to be faithful to God's word, God's people have also been misusing the word of God against God's people. To decide who is in and who is out, whose call is valid and whose isn't. Church, we too often misuse the word of God to harm and exclude God's children. We are sometimes that rebellious house that God longs to bring back to his way of love. We, God's people, have always needed guidance hearing and interpreting the word of God, and the New Testament shows us that the best place to do that work is in community with each other. So as we are gathered together today to try and hear what the Lord is telling us, I wonder if a more helpful question is not what exactly is the word of God, but rather who is the word of God. For God's word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace, full of truth. Here's another Lutherism for you this morning. Martin Luther said that the Bible is the cradle that holds Christ. In other words, the lowercase w word, the written word of God, the Bible, reveals the uppercase word, the living word of God, Christ, to us. And Christ is, finally, the word of God who has the power to save us. So we read the word of God through the lens of God's love for the world that was so vast that he gave his only son to save it. Together, we hear God's word and interpret prophecies through the eyes of Christ, through the word made flesh who says your faith has made you well. Through love who says, let the little children come to me. Through grace who says your sins are forgiven. Derek and I experienced a moment of everyday prophecy in the airport insofar as prophecy involves hearing, wrestling with, and acting upon the word of God in community. We came up against some pretty significant differences in our Christian interpretation of God's word, but through the power of the Holy Spirit and DIA, we did not react out of fear. We did not rebel against one another by allowing Christ's love to shape our conversation. We listened. We asked questions of curiosity. We shared honestly, and I truly believe we remained open to discerning together what God was saying to us. So as we journey with the prophets this month, may we all be open to moments of everyday prophecy. Let us listen to God's word together. Let us be bold in proclaiming Jesus, the word of God who has the power to save us. And let us be strengthened by the spirit of God who is with us as we go out to love Christ, sin boldly, and believe even more boldly still. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our time of sacred space this morning, we have our seasonal prayer station still, prayer flags to put out in the garden. If you would like your prayer prayed out loud during worship this morning, please leave it on the table. We'll make sure to grab it and pray it um, together in this community.
You also might notice that we have a new image for our Everyday Prophecy series. It's a pile of rocks, otherwise known as a cairn, which are guideposts often out in the woods if you're hiking, used to mark our path. Just like everyday moments of prophecy can mark our path, our walk with God, you are invited today to build your own cairn. We have a big Bible in the back over here in between the two doors. There are some rocks back there. Build a cairn that symbolizes a guidepost on your walk with Christ. And there's a reflection question for you in your bulletin. How does God's word direct your walk with Christ? If you don't want to get up and go back there, you can reflect in your seat. If you want someone to bring some rocks to you so you can build a cairn in your seat, let me know. I'll go grab some for you. This is our time of sacred space. Please join us.
Called by God to boldly proclaim our faith, let us confess it using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, died and was buried. buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we join our voices in prayer with the voices of all the prophets and all the faithful who have come before us, we trust that God hears our prayers, but we also listen for how God might be calling us to respond in, in love to our world, to our communities, to our church, our neighbors, even to ourselves. So let us pray. Glorious God, you speak your voice to us, and you send us to those in need to share your word of love and power. Open our ears and our hearts to hear your word for our lives and to listen to each other. Raise us up. Give us courage to teach, to heal, and to serve. When decisions might be difficult, when we might disagree, give us faith to respond to your call, even if it might lead us to sin boldly, but speak our faith even more boldly. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, your fingers trace the heavens and your hands mold the earth. Speak to us that we may know how to bring healing to your creation and sustain the well-being of every living thing. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Turn those who govern away from any self-serving impulses and open their hearts to the cries of all who may journey with no food or shelter those who are fleeing violence, those seeking freedom, those in search of community. Bring peace where there is violence, war, abuse, or tyranny. Give us wisdom to lift up our voices for freedom for all people in Christ, who alone has the power to save us. God of grace. Gracious God, your Embrace brings wholeness to those who are troubled and healing to those who are sick or broken. Bring healing to all who suffer in any way and grant them renewal. We lift up to you, especially those who are close to this community. We pray for Phyllis Zimmerman, who is experiencing some health concerns. We pray for, we lift up those concerns that are printed in our bulletin as we pray for Janice Eller's granddaughter, Anna, for Eden, KB, Bill Markham, Betty Padilla, Mary Drain, Shirley Campbell, Dennis Bernhardt, Jan Picard, Elaine Hart, and Becky. We pray also for those who are living with and struggling with cancer, for Kate, Mark, Jill, Jay, Mike, Father Charles, Carolyn, Steve, Lynette, Angelo, Joe, Rosemary, and Jim. And God, hear us as we Lift up to you any others that we might name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
God of grace, hear our prayer. Welcoming God in baptism, you knit your people together in community. Strangers become companions and enemies become neighbors. Help us to hear your call to open our hearts to those we have so easily shut out. We give you thanks for the, gap, the gift of baptism, especially for those in this church who celebrate baptismal birthdays this week. For Tegan Johnson, Sandy Tungsvik, Helen Wiedelman, Jacob Norton, and Christy Peach. And God, we lift up the prayers of this community as we give thanks for intern Pastor Katie, who is living out her baptismal call. We pray for the wonderful gifts that she has brought to our church and for her future and for the next congregation she will serve, she will be a blessing to. God of grace. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and we commend all for whom we pray. We trust in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor and with the folks online. Peace.
Together, let us pray that these and all God's gifts would be used to serve all those in need and to serve our community. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We hear at this table God's welcome for all people, that all are welcome to come and receive bread and wine or juice, which is nothing more and nothing less than Christ's body and blood for you. We hear that promise that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, that by this holy communion we may know the unity, the unity that we share with all people in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Come to our Lord's table. I invite the assembly here to have a seat. And um, first we will serve those online, or if you're in this space and uh, unable to come forward or, or just desire to receive these gifts in your seat, we have... Uh, little kits for communion. Uh, if you're in that group and didn't gra grab one of these kits as you came in, uh, just raise your hand and we'll bring one to you now. All right. So I invite those here in this space and those online to take your bread. And with these, that means you peel off the little top layer, take your bread, and hear this promise for you that this is the body of Christ given for you. Now, for some, the next layer might be a little more difficult. If you need help, give me a sign or give your neighbor a sign. <laughs> Someone might need to help me. I got it. Now, receive, take your drink and hear this promise for you that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For those, the rest of you in this space, uh, we have three stations that you can come forward to. Right here in the middle station uh, will be a common cup. And so if you prefer to drink from the common cup, make sure and move over no matter where you're sitting. Move over here to the middle to receive that. Otherwise, uh, the silver tray has on the outside is wine that's red colored and grape juice that's yellow colored. All of our bread is gluten free. And throughout this time, as this is the first Sunday of the month, we often do what we do is we have healing prayers. If you or anybody you know or love has a need for any kind of healing, we invite you to go just back through the glass doors there. And there's a space there for you to to be able to receive those healing prayers from from another any time during this time of communion. Come now for all is ready.
Friends, may this gift of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. I would like to invite any of our home communion ministers who are here with us to come on forward. Um, we bless those who are unable to be with us in worship and, and send this out with those. And while they're coming forward, I want to draw your attention to, um, there's a full page in the bulletin there on page 12 that, talk, uh, that talks about um, on August 4th, we're going to be gathering those of you who are home community ministers, but also if, if you're not and you want to know a little bit more about it, it is a very, I think, a very fulfilling ministry that, that folks love to be able to, he to do, not just those who receive it, but you can ask any of these people the joy that they receive by being able to go and visit with people and to take this gift to them. So put that on your calendars. That'll be between the services on August 4th if you're able to join us. Uh, we just like to give give some updates about delivering home communion, what that looks like. have your name. <laughs> I'll give you a blank one. And I don't know about her. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think she's home. Do any of you need kits? Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else need a kit? Okay. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, I give you thanks for the gift that we have received here of of the body and blood of your son, Jesus, and for each of these, for all of our home communi communion ministers who, who take this gift out. We ask that you would bless them and bless those who receive it in their homes, in the hospital, wherever they may be, that they may be, that they may be enlivened by your presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, we're uh, glad uh, that you have been able to worship with us, and certainly I am overjoyed for the, by this opportunity to be able to worship with you after being away for a number of weeks. Uh, a number of people have asked if I am going to share anything about um, my experience. Some of you know I was walking in Spain for a month, um, and so we'll talk as a pastoral staff and try to figure out um, what I might, how I might do that. If you're on social media, you can go and look at that. It, you know, I, I uh, wrote each, each day about that and shared pictures. But I know that not everybody is, so I can, we'll talk about that and let you know. So as we go out, uh, we'll send you out with a blessing and we'll sing. But I invite you to stick around. There's some goodies, some donuts, uh, <laughs> so that you don't have to eat the word of God, literally. Yeah, one more. Oh, yeah. Trivia tonight. A trivia night, it is at King of Glory, right? And this is L2F2, but really for all ages. You can bring your own team if you have a trivia team, but you don't have to. Uh, just show up and we'll put you in a team. Uh, and dinner is provided. At what time did you say? Five o'clock over at King of Glory. If whether you're confident in your trivia or not, it, it'll be a fun gathering for all. So as we, as we do uh, go out, go, go and grab some goodies, uh, greet one another, especially maybe somebody you don't recognize or don't know. Greet them, um, and let's share in this community that God has gathered us in. I invite you now, as you're able, to stand and receive a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.